I had planned on getting out and mowing the yard today after the last couple of heavy rains we had. This really popped up. I said, you know, I'm, yeah, I might as well get out there and take care of it. Today's Tuesday, the, I think it's the 21st of May, something like that. And you know, the sun's out, it's beautiful. However, guess what's gonna happen in about two hours? We're gonna have more rain, it's coming out of Oklahoma. It's that mess that's really been tearing them up out there with those tornadoes, poor people. Anyway, in a couple hours, it won't be like this. Check out these three cells coming right at us. One, two, three. Gonna, gonna go right over the top of poor old Conway. She's gearing up. We got about 40 minutes. Now you know why I didn't cut the grass. Well, hello again. We're back in the garage finally, after running between the millions and billions of raindrops. Our yard's like a swamp, but that's not gonna stop us. We gotta get back on this thing. For those of you who have been keeping up with the series, we're gonna do the exact same procedure for cleaning. This is the lower control arm. This is the lower control arm mounting bracket. This is the spindle. And over here is our uh, strut shaft. So we're going to use the same basic procedure we used on the differential and the rest of the stuff underneath the car. First thing we have to do is clean off all the grease and dirt and grime and crap. And once we get it all down to the metal, then we'll give it a good washing with some water and get as much off as we can. Then we're going to throw it in the vinegar and let it set for a couple of days. Uh, there's quite a bit here, so I don't know if uh, I'll have enough room. I'll have to probably do a couple and then a couple after they get cleaned up. They'll have to do the second the second few parts but it'll be it'll be a process it's not going to be easy but once I get this scraped off and get it washed then we'll go to the uh, we'll go under the fender well the initial cleaning is done got as much of the dirt and grime and crap off remember you know the vinegar won't remove dirt it removes rust and it takes you know maybe a little bit of dirt off but it, it, it it's primarily rust so I think we're pretty much down to the rust on these parts I wire brushed them all by hand after getting all this crap off. And that only leaves one thing left to do. Coffee time. The smaller pieces I'm going to go ahead and soak in vinegar in this right here. And as you can see they're already being soaked. The three larger pieces and later on the, uh, the uh, upper uh, control arm will be soaked in here. Now I'm a little bit short on vinegar. I'm down about two gallons. I'll have to make a trip down to Walmart and fill that baby up. I want him now this uh, strut rod's covered. Most of the lower control arm is covered and most of the spindle, but it's not enough. I want it all the way up to where it's, it's at least up to about the bottom of the spindle, the bottom of the silver spot there. Well, I got enough vinegar to cover everything. The lids are back on. She, she'll just have to sit for about four or five days now and soak because I have other things to do anyway. So it won't be any big deal. Hope we'll come back in about a week and take a look at it. But meanwhile, we've, this is our upper control arm. And I don't have a vise. I will one of these days, but right now, I've just never had a need for a vise. And actually, I'm not even sure I need one now, just for one thing and maybe one on the other side. But I've got it held down with these clamps on this table. It's pretty secure. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get, this, uh, get these bushings out of here and uh, the ball joint. But first, let me show you how these bushings are put together on this Ford. Now this is one of Ford's better ideas. Uh, now normally your two uh, bushings on each side of the horizontal shaft of your control arms, they're pressed on. It takes a lot of pressure to push those babies through there and get them tight on the ends of, these, uh, on the ends of this horizontal shaft. And you know, usually the one on the bottom too, the lower control arm. But here they thread them on. Now, I like that idea a whole lot. Should be fairly easy, you know. Apparently, I think this is one and three eighths of an inch. I may have measured a little bit wrong. I don't know. And uh, it doesn't look like our bushings have these things on there. They're a plastic thing that press. I guess it goes on first. It helps keep the grease on the inside. I, I believe that's what it is. But anyway, you can buy this entire uh, setup if you want. It comes with the the grease fittings. Now uh, these, I think these are grease keepers, keep the grease from you know, oozing out, you know, and drip it on the ground. And then of course your two bushings and your horizontal rods, you can buy the whole thing. I prefer not to do that. I just want to buy the, uh, the bushings with the, uh, the grease fittings and uh, these things right here, whatever they're called. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not having a whole lot of luck getting these bushings off. By the way, that's a one and three eighths inch. And uh, I have a socket here, and this thing's supposed to have 350 pounds, foot pounds of breakaway torque, and it is not doing it. So I don't know if that means it's on more than 350 foot pounds or not. I think it's just rusted on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little heat to it, put a heat, some heat to both of them, I guess. Well, I knew our luck was going too good. I mean, I heated this here and here. I heated the whole thing on both sides. And that little earthquake will not break it loose. Oh, well, you know, we're not going to make it a total loss. And we'll try to get this ball joint out of here. This would be the upper ball joint. We're going to get that baby out of there. I don't expect it to come out as easy as the lower one did, but you never know. You know, remember I loosened this thing up so I wouldn't have to do it off the car. All right, after I take the nut and this thing off here that threaded down on there, that, that gives me a little bit of look-see down in there to see what I have to play with. The first thing I did was take the chisel and slide it in between this metal and this, this thing right here, which is, that's the boot. That's the boot holder. I thought these things were uh, originally European design, but they're, they're, they are, but they're not. Okay, they're, they're sort of, but they aren't. So now let's see what we have to, I'm going to have to do a little cleaning down around here and see what we have. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chisel, I'm going to put it under there and I'm going to tap it all the way around with the hammer and create a space. If I can get that thing lifted up to a certain point, I'll be able to flip it back the other way, hit it with a hammer and it should pop right out. And let's see how well I do with that. All right, I am getting some good space there. I'll keep working at it and then bam, we'll hit it on this side, it should pop right out. Well, she feels fairly loose and it's kind of crooked as you can see. Let's see what happens here. That's all there is to it. Ball joint is out. Now, she, you didn't need a big old vise to do that. No. It can be done if you take your time. That's what it looks like on one side. Here's what it looks like on the other. It's a big old cup. Well, these old bushings are giving me a little bit of a headache. You know, for some reason they just don't want to come out. I've been heating them with the torch and everything. But they just don't want to crack loose. So I, I got a hold of Brandon. I said, what do you think about this? I said, they you know, they're not all that rusty and everything. They just don't want to come loose from that horizontal shaft right there. He said, well, what you really need to do is switch from this to a Michigan heat wrench. Well, I had no problem with that. We now have some Map Pro gas here, which is, you know, a whole lot hotter. And it does a whole lot better heat transfer. We're going to really cook these babies and then we're going to slap our little air wrench back on there and see if they won't break them loose. I'm really disappointed that this thing didn't break them loose. But we shall see what happens. Well, the old Michigan heat wrench still didn't do the trick. And I was running out of ideas. However, then I remembered the old tree trick. <laughs> I came out here with my little pipe, hooked it into the crotch of the tree, my uh, breaker bar, put some mighty power into it and broke it loose. So let's take it back over and see if the wrench, uh, the impact wrench can do the rest. Actually, I think what I better do is try to heat up the other side and break it loose in the tree, then go over and take them both off. Both of them are loose. Now this may be a Michigan heat wrench, but this is an Arkansas pipe wrench used in conjunction with a tree. Everyone should own one of those wrenches. All right, let's see what happens now. I've got it clamped down, should come off. Look at that, look at, look at that, look at that. Look at, it wants to get over by its mommy, the pipe wrench, did you see that? All right, let's go for number two. There it is. Nothing to it, guys. Nothing to it at all. And I did it all without a vice. You know, I'm kind of the guy that every woman wants. You know, a guy with no vices. Well, that just leaves us with the upper control arm to clean. This is the bottom bracket that held that shock on, that front shock with the bolt. And this is that uh, inside fender well plate that I took off as part of that splash shield. The uh, bar, this bar right here, we can throw that right in the vinegar right away. So I'll try to get some of this cleaned up. It's really, really getting hot out here. It's supposed to be in the 90s today. 
So I'll be taking my time with it, but hopefully I've also got a yard to mow. Oh, I'll do that when the sun goes down. I am not going out in this sun. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and throw this in the vinegar and take a look and see what's been happening and, and overnight, see if we're getting any dirty vinegar. All right, let's take a peek inside here after not even quite 24 hours. Oh, it's starting to get really mangy and nasty. It's bubbling, bubbling real good. So we'll go ahead and throw this down in there with it. Let that set over here. I, I'm not even going to pick that up because the lid doesn't close all the way. I want to keep it as covered, get, keep as much air out of it as I can. She's working. Just a few more days, guys, on that. All right, let's stop uh, before I clean this thing. Let's stop and talk about our proportional valve right now. They call it a proportional valve. But in the book, it's just called a valve assembly. So it doesn't matter to me what they call it. They can just call it a hunk of metal and adjust uh, the flow of brake fluid. Don't care. All right, look, uh, the way this thing works is you'll notice that there are two lines on this thing, no other lines. And what happens is this line here comes from the master cylinder. And if you look right there, you can see the letter M for master cylinder, okay? And then it, the fluid comes out directly out of the master cylinder down into this valve. And then from there, it goes over to, that's the R for rear brakes. It goes out here to a line that heads on back to the rear brakes. Now here's what it looks like in the schematic, in the drawing. We have the, uh, coming directly out of the uh, front of the master cylinder, the fluid comes down, goes through that valve assembly or the proportioning valve, and then out all the way to the rear brakes. The front brakes, which are right here, come directly out of another place on the master cylinder. There's no valve in between. So what's happening here? Well, this thing has disc brakes on the front and drum brakes on the rear. And you don't want too much, you want, from what I understand, you know, this thing here will adjust how much fluid pressure goes to the back brakes, which is supposed to be less than what goes to the front brakes, which is obvious because the front brakes gets full pressure out of the master cylinder. The back brakes are adjusted via this thing right here. This is the adjustment valve right here. And uh, nor I've heard everything from a 70-30 split, 60-40. I even had one fella said that he adjusted uh, his new uh, proportioning valve 50-50. And it worked great. So, you know, <laughs> the whole thing boils down to whatever I think works best for me. And, of course, what works best for you. But I think starting out with a 60-40 or 70-30 is the way to go. I don't think 50-50 is the way to go. Anyway, we are not going to use this thing right here. This thing is too mangy, too crappy, too rusty, and I don't trust it. It's unsafe. It's 54 years old, and the only thing you can do with these things is you can open them up, and they can be rebuilt. You can get a kit, but it has to be some new sleeve. Has to be, it's just not worth the money. I can get one a whole lot cheaper a uh, aftermarket replacement a whole lot cheaper than what it would cost to rebuild this one and I'm not a you know I'm not one of these Thunderbird perfectionists you know everything's got to be exactly according to Hoyle and, and all that stuff you know X number of threads have to stick up I mean that's what it says to get points in a show uh, uh no no I don't deal with that it's I want this car safe so here's what we're going to replace it with we will be going to Summit Racing and buying one of these Willwood brake proportioning valves for 36 bucks, which is a whole lot cheaper than some of them. Now they go up to 70, 80, 90. There's a proportioning valve, a different one for just about every car in the market. Yeah, you know, and, that, and many will work on the same car. This is one of them. This is uh, this is the part number for this one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy this one. And uh, let me show you. We'll go down here and take a look at the 360 degree picture of that baby and you can see that it has one line in and one line out okay all both you know the pressure being controlled by that black crank handle well hello again as you can see I have just finished vacuuming underneath here and we got a a lot of it in my shop bag is probably pretty much full and then all of this on the floor down here <laughs> just what it's incredible 
in, in order to protect the brake line, you got to protect these brake lines. Though. They're in pretty good shape. If they're in good shape, don't worry about changing them out. Ours is in excellent shape from here into the rear of the car. I just took a, uh, I just took a socket and uh, put some uh, electrical tape over the end. Then I just slid it right over the top of the uh, fitting like that. That'll protect it. Keep the dirt and crap out while I'm down here messing around and spraying and a bunch of other stuff. All right, the, uh, the vacuuming is done. Now it's time to take a heavy wire brush, which is be this one right here. And we're gonna just start brushing off the loose uh, surface rust best we can. And some of the places that are a little bit too tight for the big brush, we'll use this small wire brush, you know, that we did. Same thing we did to the rear of the car. Nothing has changed. It's gonna be a dirty mess, but when I'm done, that'll be the end of our video. And uh, there may be one or two things I want to cover, but I don't think so. I'm just going to go ahead and wire brush it all real good and then vacuum it down one more time. And then we'll spray it with that rust, uh, what do they call it, the rust uh, changer stuff. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Let me get the can and look at it. It's rust reformer. <laughs> why? My mind just goes blank anymore on some words. I don't understand why. But I have some of this uh, Rust-Oleum rust reformer left over. And I also have some of this uh, Permatex rust treatment left over. So we're going to be using them both up underneath here. Uh, but before we do, after we wire brush it and before we spray it, we'll go ahead and take some of this uh, Supertech brake parts cleaner. Give it a good spray all the way up in there and get as much of the dust and crap off as we can. Then we'll go ahead and spray the rust reformer, let it set for 24 hours. So let me, and then tomorrow we'll come out and maybe wire brush a little bit more, maybe put a little more rust reformer on. Depends on what I see when I come out. And if everything looks good, we'll just go ahead and spray on some undercoating up under there. Or no, we'll, we'll spray on some uh, primer. Then we'll spray some paint. Then we'll spray some undercoating and let it set for another 24 hours and let, let the undercoating harden up. You can see a lot of the undercoating is uh, just, you know, splashing water up underneath here, driving through water and mud and stuff. It just tears up the old uh, stuff right off the car. It just takes it right off. And uh, so let me see what I can do with that. This is not going to be a uh, massive effort because this is pretty much in good shape. But most of it, let me see here, most of it's in good shape. It's pretty well covered everywhere with that undercoating already, that sound deadener. So we don't have a whole lot to do, actually. Well, that's about the best I can do. As you can see, there was n just tons and tons of dirt and everything up under there. Most of it was just dirty undercoating. Now there is some rust. Yeah, we have some rust uh, in this area right here, over in this area here. And we have a little rust down here we're going to have to take care of with the rust uh, treatment. I wire brushed it to no end. And uh, there was... <coughs> oh, there's not not much rust at all, really. Just basically dirty undercoating. And I hope I got it pretty well clean with the wire brush. The next thing we're going to do is take our little uh, brake cleaner, parts cleaner, cheap stuff too, and uh, just spray it all up under there real good. But before I do that, I want to sweep the floor up. What a mess, huh? Oh my goodness! And the vacuum cleaner is about full. All right, that looks a whole lot better. Okay, now it's time for the brake clean spray. I'm going to use the entire can. This stuff's pretty cheap. There's only like a couple bucks a can down at Walmart. I saw that and I said, hmm, I picked up a couple cans of that. A lot cheaper than that other stuff. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a good spray everywhere, especially in the rusty areas first. And then kind of I want to wash the dirt down. We're going to get more dirt down on the floor when we're done, but at least we'll... At least it'll be cleaner than it was when we're done. And then uh, I'll let it dry out completely while I'm having a cup of coffee. Well, that looks pretty good so far. You know, a little better. That old brake cleaner does a great job of cleaning up the, the last remnants, you know. So what I'm doing right now is I am using this uh, Permatex uh, rust treatment on some uh, obvious rusty spots like this one right here. And uh, this one up here. And uh, we're going to hit a few others. And then we'll uh, use the other can, this uh, Rust-Oleum stuff. I'll wind up using up both cans to do all the rest of it. So let's get that done, and then we'll come back in 24 hours and take a look at it. A couple more things before we close out. Uh, this is the impact socket I purchased. I bought this on eBay 
or I guess a week ago, in order to be used with these bushings. And I measured it out, I measured this out, I don't know how I did it, but I measured it at one and three eighths. Actually, one and three eighths will work, but you gotta kind of bang the, the socket on a little bit. It's actually one and seven sixteenths. One and seven sixteenths. Now you'll see that it'll fit down about, that's about as far as it goes. But fortunately for me, I was lucky enough to be able to get them off anyway. So I will be ordering another one of these. I'll have a one and three eighths and a one and seven sixteenths. Remember that, one and seven sixteenths, okay? The other thing, at least that's the way it is on my 66. You better measure your own just to be sure. One more thing, uh, our, spl our splash shield needs a good cleaning, a good de-rusting, and we'll give it a good primer paint. Not too bad over here, mostly dirt again. I'll give it a good washing first. And then uh, a little wire brush a little bit. As a matter of fact, I don't think I'm gonna find any rust on here at all. Maybe a little bit down here. I don't know, that might be just dirt too. So anyway, I hope you had fun again with this one. It was a dirty job. Until next time, this is John. As usual, there's one more thing. <laughs> I always seem to forget it. Uh, it'll be a few days before I get back to the Thunderbird. The temperature is really, really getting hot. It's running into the 90s now. I have a couple of cabinets I need to strip. Radio cabinets. I want to get work on those. I've been promising to do those for a while. They will be done and before I come back with the T-Birds. So I just don't want to be out here in the scalding heat, stripping radio cabinets. You know, every day I delay, it's only going to get hotter and hotter and hotter.